Hello, all. This is Dr. Dave Mastag talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I want to talk to you about what does a research assistant do during your PhD and talk about some of the duties and responsibilities of a research assistant. So if you don't know me, I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out to get through graduate school that I decided to pay the favor forward and help you out. All right, so what is a research assistant and, and what exactly do you get with a research assistant? It, um, you know, there's a bunch of different questions that you can ask and sort of try to figure out with this. And it's not necessarily all that clear. And I wasn't all that clear until I started doing my PhD in terms of what exactly you do with that. So I wanted to answer that particular question. And there's all sorts of different sort of uh, variances and in, in different ways to sort of think about this. So first of all, research assistant should, should be just a way that you get stipends for doing your PhD. So a university has as, um, different ways to pay different people in a research assistantship. It's just one way that you can pay individuals to do research, right? So everything that you do at a university, most universities across the world, I believe I might be wrong on that. Um, you get paid for uh, doing research for the university or, you know, being part of the university and writing different things or coming up with sort of different ideas. Um, they have to, um, whenever you come up with these ideas or you come up with something that's new or different or you write something, they have to compensate for you for that particular task. So it's, it's the same thing when you're doing a PhD. Uh, you are actually doing a research on behalf of the university as well as sort of learning things on how to do that. So how to actually do the craft. So it's very much kind of like this artesian model. Normally, most PhDs are that way. It's kind of like an artesian model where you're kind of learning how to do or you're being sort of a craftsman, craftsmanship sort of model where you're learning how to do something from somebody else. And the research assistantship is just a way to get compensated for learning how to do that. And you're doing research on behalf of a principal investigator, right? So it's not your own um, independent research and in it's, or it's not normally that way, um, but generally, you know, it, it, uh, it can sort of vary and I'm gonna get into that. So basically you're just doing research on behalf of some principal investigator or, you know, it's some sort of professor someplace, right? So it's basically, and, and you can call principal investigator, can be called a PI. Um, and, and basically it's just somebody that's taking the lead on that particular research project and you're doing research on behalf of them. So what exactly do you do for research assistant duties? Um, there is a lot of different duties that you could do. So, a, you know, a list of duties that you could possibly do is write reviews of papers that are out there. So what that would what that means is you go out and actually um, read other people's work and consolidate them and put it into something that's really usable. Um, it might be in sort of a table or something like that. Or maybe it is a 10 page document where you sort of go through the different research that other people have done. You can also collect data um, or clean data. So those are really important things. So collecting data would be, um, so for example, research that, that would be really common in business would be you'd go and, and uh, look to see at um, collect different data sets and put those data sets together or create some sort of original data set. You know, one thing that I did my masters, for example, I looked at different websites and collected all the different data on the different websites where you might do a survey, for example, and you're going to be doing the bull work or the grunt work um, basically for the principal investigator. Now you can also clean data. That's kind of another thing. And that's basically just going through the, maybe it's hundreds of different um, data points. So you've collected all this data hundreds of different um, survey samples. And then what you're gonna do is just go through those hundred different, hundreds of different survey samples and make sure that everybody has the same name and, you know, uh, or, you know, kind of have the same sort of standard format and stuff like that. So it's kind of, um, that stuff is pretty tedious, um, but it has to be done. And so the principal investigator is gonna be thinking about, or the, you know, the, the lead professors can be thinking about, well, I don't wanna do that. I've done my fair share of that. I'm going to pass that on to, um, you know, a PhD. 
or a PhD student, and they're going to go through that and, and do all of that sort of bulwark stuff. And that's, that's, you're learning the craft when you're doing that as well. We all have to do that. I do that on a regular basis, all this kind of bulwark kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, we're going to try to push that off to somebody else as much as we possibly can, because it is tedious and, and, you know, it's, but and nobody wants to do it essentially, but, you know, somebody has got to do it. And, uh, um, you know, at the end of the day. And anyways, so the the third thing that you're going to do is analyze data. Um, highly unlikely you're going to be analyzing too much data in the first um, semester. It's probably going to be much more along the lines of maybe it's your second or, um, you know, maybe it's in your second year, your second semester or your second year. Um, third year, you might be actually doing that a little bit more because you have taken, the reason is, is unless you've taken, taken research methods and statistics and stuff like that before, um, you're just not going to have that background in any sort of way. And so it's going to be really foreign for you. And then the other thing, there's a bit of a trust issue that we have to worry about. Um, and, and it's not, Everybody does this, but sometimes um, PhD students, they have to gain some trust in terms of their abilities and, and, you know, analyzing data and stuff like that. So we have to watch out for that. And so principal investigators are going to probably analyze the data first and then go into it and um, see what they can do or, you know, double check what you've done as well. Um, you're going to probably perform interviews. Uh, and the reason is, is you're just going to get deeper into a particular context or sort of investigate something. Um, but in general, what you're going to be probably doing is writing up a lot of the bulwark part of any particular paper or any sort of research effort. You're going to be doing the vast majority of the work. And kind of a rule that a lot of people I've heard have said is that you're probably going to be doing like 75% of the work for a paper. Is that fair? Um, actually, it kind of is, uh, largely because you're learning the craft. And so it took me a while to sort of figure that out. For the first little while, I was like, eh. Um, but uh, what you're doing is learning the craft. And the sort of time and effort it's going to take for you is going to be a lot longer than somebody else that is, is, is a little bit further along in their journey. But, um, you know, that just means that, that you are learning. And once you have iterated, a few times and you've gotten feedback on the work, you're going to start learning that a little bit more. It's going to be faster the next time you do it. And it does get faster and faster um, until a point that it's just like at the end of the day, it's just everybody reaches a plateau and you can only do as quick as, as you possibly can. Um, so, you know, what is a job description of a graduate research assistant? Well, really the way that, that I view it, you know, not everybody views it this way, um, but it's, it's a way or it's a tool to be on your way towards doing your own independent research, right? So you are um, using those tools, you're going to get to like a 75% of being an independent thinker is really what you should be thinking about is you're kind of learning the craft, the skills to get to the point where you can be your own independent thinker and you can sort of run your own ship. Um, and, you know, run your own lab, for example, which may be in, you know, psychology or in, um, you know, different areas that's, that's a little bit more common, um, you know, science, for example. But we, in, in business, it's a little bit more collective and you do work, um, you know, in different projects and intermittently work with different people. Um, we don't necessarily call them labs. Some people do, but that's a little bit um, less common in terms of working under a certain lab. Um, but what we do is, is work with other people and you're learning those skills um, to, to work with other people and be an independent researcher and ask different questions and just kind of be curious with what you're doing. So what should you not be doing as a, a research assistantship? Um, you know, you shouldn't be doing anything that's kind of like personal tasks or anything like that for the principal investigator, laundry um, you know, uh, picking up kids, all that kind of stuff. Well, it can be done and you can do it for a favor, um, but it shouldn't be part of the roles that you're doing. That's kind of you know, borderline, not, not sort of kosher. Um, you know, you, you should be doing things that um, are taking 
really taking advantage of your capabilities and where you are as a you know phd and developing as a phd throughout your journey and so you know maybe you've just taken a couple of courses on research methods well you probably should be doing stuff on research methods maybe you are at the beginning of your journey and you don't know a lot well then doing you know collecting data um analyzing data and or through collecting data and cleaning data that makes a lot of sense um, if you are really far and you're kind of very senior and, you know, four or five years into a PhD, then it makes sense that you might be writing stuff and coming up with your own independent work um, and sort of partnering with somebody, a principal investigator with that sort of work that you're doing. Um, you know, what should you not be doing? Things that are outside of your scope of your capabilities. Um, and so that's really important in terms of when you're starting out and in you know you're just you're going to be overwhelmed and at getting somebody to if they ask you to write a paper or something at the get-go yeah it's you're probably not there yet um but you know you can sort of begin the um start the beginnings of writing something that's a little bit independent um and then sort of partner with somebody now, the, the last thing I think is really important for you to, to consider is that what you should not be doing or what it should not be feeling like is that you're getting taken advantage of in any sort of way. Um, and I know that can happen actually in a, in a PhD program or you know with PhDs around the world. It, you do sometimes feel taken advantage of. And whenever that's the case, um, definitely it means that there's some sort of boundary that's being crossed and you should have an open discussion with somebody, um, hopefully with the, you know, your professor or, or principal investigator first. Um, but then if it doesn't go away and that feeling doesn't go away, you should probably talk to somebody else, um, somebody that is more, very senior and whatnot um, in, in, you know, at the university and in terms of a senior professor, sometimes they're very helpful. And usually you know who those people are. They're usually nice individuals that you can talk to. Um, so hopefully that answers your question in terms of what does a PhD um, research assistant do. Really, it is a way to get paid for generating research and ideas for a university or research institute, um, and as well as lear learning the craft of becoming a researcher and becoming a PhD. That's really a big thing to think about is that it is a learning experience and uh, you do get paid for that. And so sometimes what it does cover is things like um, cost of living, um, intuition, you're not gonna get rich. Um, you shouldn't. I've never heard of anybody getting rich um, doing getting a research assistantship, but basically you should be just getting enough to get by and that's kind of what the standards are across um, all universities. And that's something to think about. All right. So if you like this video, uh, do give me a thumbs up. And I'm just about ready to go on vacation. That's why I'm a little bit dressed down and enjoying myself a little bit more sitting outside. My house is a mess. Uh, we're actually getting some, some work done, some floors put in our house. But anyways, um, take care. Have a wonderful day and looking forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.